Ellie has a condition called Wolf-Hirschhorn syndrome. Uh, it's quite a rare condition. It's one in 50,000 children. We had a specialist come in and they said, look, no, she was actually born without her eye. And I vividly remember, you know, hearing sort of the doctors talking, you know, sort of genetics, abnormalities, facial features. It was, so I think as a parent, you know that that is not a normal conversation around the yeah. birth of a child, that something was different. There's one doctor in Melbourne that knows a lot about it. And um, apart from that, there's not a lot of help within Australia for her condition. She suffers from seizures and she also has a really compromised immune system. She has very low muscle tone. She is non-verbal. She's very slow to gain weight. Seizures are a part of her condition and they can be short, but then she has lots of them and they knock her. They really sort of, she, she becomes exhausted. She becomes weak. A normal common cold or a flu, which Ali had probably 18 or 12, 18 months ago, put her in hospital for 12 days. It's not until we go to hospital that I think mm. this could be the time or, you know, how much longer is this going to keep going for? I was in there every day bar one and just watching her not moving, not responding. And I remember saying to Luke, I don't see us getting her home at all. So we also have a four-year-old son, Cooper. Cooper's mm. unbelievable little boy. He loves his sister to death. He does anything to help her and protect her. He does, he does understand that she's different. I don't think he knows to what extent, yeah. um, but he adores her. He really adores her. So having a child with special needs, um, Cooper's life has been affected too in uh, some of the activities we do on the weekend are cut short because we need to get Hallie home. Obviously, when Ellie's unwell, then unfortunately, a lot of our focus is on her. We came across a very special kids probably three years ago now. So having somewhere that we can bring Ellie for a weekend or somewhere during the week that gives us some just time with Cooper as well. For us as a family, it's important. The hospice is important. It allows us to have time just as a couple. It allows us to have a break from Ellie's routine. It allows us to have just one-on-one -on -one time with Cooper. But knowing that the very special kids have got all the right people in the hospice, all the right facilities, it made it very comfortable for us to both to make the decision to be able to leave Ellie here. Leaving your child anywhere for the first time is nerve-wracking. And I, and I did feel very nervous walking in that morning, but once I walked out those doors, you just, you know, you know she's going to be happy. You know she's going to be fine. So it's, it's a good feeling, a good feeling for us. May's our family support worker. May's fantastic. Um, she is our go-to person in relation to very special kids. May asks, you know, how is life at the moment with Ellie? And, and it's very easy for me to explain to her that, you know, there has been, you know, some hard times. It was when she got out of hospital recently. And just to have that person to explain, to vent, to complain about how sometimes life is, she's, um, yeah, she's a good help. For us as a family, uh, knowing that people support the Piggy Bank Appeal, which supports very special kids in the hospice, is really important. Having people donate to the Piggy Bank Appeal uh, makes our lives easier, knowing that the funding's going to be there for us to have somewhere that we can bring Ellie for respite through the hospice. Hopes and dreams for Ellie, just to be happy. I think one thing we learnt very early on was to not look at one other child with Wolf Herschel and say, well, that's what Ellie's going to be, because there are a lot of children that have passed away early, but then on the other hand, there are some, you know, young adults, older adults around the world, so who knows?